Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today as you can see I'm bringing you another uh, build guide video for Battle of Exile and this time I'm playing uh, Ultimatum uh, Battle of Exile 3.14 Ultimatum League and um, yeah, today I'm showing you my General's uh, Gry Blade Flurry build and uh, it's been a pretty insane build uh, to play and uh, yeah, by no means is it uh, completely done and finished i'm still gonna be upgrading it a little bit here and there and you can of course you know find some uh, interesting uniques or something or cluster choose to maybe implement into this build to make it even better but anyway um yeah i'm gonna show you quickly first of all uh, how this uh, build runs so we're gonna run in a tall 16 tier 16 map with decent crit multi mods and some other st uh, stuff metamorph as well so i'm gonna show you guys single target as well and uh, yeah basically uh, first of all i'm gonna show you how the build plays and then i'm gonna start uh, talk a little bit uh, further uh, a little bit later on but essentially we are uh, using general scry to uh, bring out mirage warriors and they are going to be standing here or attacking 0.6 seconds channeling uh, blade flurry uh, so it, it did uh, get a small little nerf this lead from 1 second to six, 0 0.6 so that just means that we need to uh, pretty much get um, over 2 attacks per second uh, over 10 attacks per second uh, you know on average right it's not that hard it's, it's not, nothing that hard so this is how it runs ultimatums here this is t16 of course right and uh, nothing too hard if you don't put too many uh you know damaging mods on the map device uh, you're gonna be completing them most of the time but yeah d16 you know all uh, doing d16 ultimatums and uh doing all of the uh, waves is um, sometimes pretty hard uh, but usually it's pretty much something like that right so what i'm doing right now i'm just holding down my w button which is uh, my cyclone right and uh, I'm not even holding down my mouse button uh, that often. I'm just pretty much holding down W, maybe leap slamming here and there, and then uh, pretty much slamming my E button, which is uh, also a general spray. So I, I, I tend to, uh, I wanted to use a setup like this because I don't usually want to hold down my left mouse button that often. So this is a lot more, you know, chill. If you if that's right right uh, but anyway yeah this is how it plays and yeah that's really pretty pretty easy ultimatum here right uh, single target I'm gonna show you that as well let's uh, quickly go head into the bus room right also porcupines here as you can see not too much of a problem uh, okay let's move on here let's uh, try to gather the metamorph samples right uh, let's take this and uh, yeah it's been a really fun build overall i mean it, the clear might not seem that special right and uh, you you might maybe see like uh, some enemies be left uh, behind alive but our general scry is gonna channel 0 0.6 seconds uh, behind us so we're actually gonna kill them anyway uh, we don't need to stay and look if they die or not so it's pretty cool it's pretty nice and you can see that the damage is totally fine right and i am not using any extra extra expensive items right <laughs> uh, the most expensive item i think was my sword or the six link chest piece uh, both were, were something like 5x or 6 6x 5 or 6x uh, something like that so i mean nothing nothing too crazy right and i, I am planning to get a proper like maybe a 600 to 700 p dps sword anyway let's leave this uh, here let's move on let's kill a few metamorphs here so we can actually get the metamorph uh, boss encounter as well right and uh, yeah head into the boss room to show some single targets so oh nice pop up uh, oh the boss is actually missing uh, that's fine we don't need to see him <laughs> How is this possible? I'm using a, an RTX 3090 here. Uh, anyway, the, uh, let's just put the most hardest uh, metamorph here. Let's open up this as well so you can see my damage. With this. Ray, uh, 
Yep, that's pretty. Uh, that's that's done and dusted. <laughs> so if you like big single target and you like uh, decent clear speed, not D1 clear speed, uh, but decent clear speed, then this build might be for you, right? Anyway, so this is how I run my D16 maps. It's just no problem at all, right? There were no. I mean, we didn't use any really hard map mods there, right? No curse mods or something like that, but you can definitely do them, just, you know, ultimatums might be a little bit tricky there. But of course, we can invest more into this build and make it even better. But anyway, uh, what am I using here and how does this build right work, right? So I kind of explained it uh, pretty much. When we are channeling, uh, we are um, cast while channeling, uh, infused channeling with Cyclone with Desecrate. So we are doing corpses and if we walk right here, I hit my E button, we bring out our Mirage Warriors. They don't actually consume the corpse, so pretty much we can just make a few corpses and then run around with just, you know, one mouse button, right? <laughs> it's really, really nice, chill and really insane damage build. And uh, yeah, as you can see, my attacks per second at the moment is like 7.14, I put my totems down, my rage, my berserk up as well, so we are over 12 pretty easily. Right, over 10 pretty easily, right? Uh, but yeah, def defense wise, nothing too special. Uh, we have like 35 uh, fees damage reduction, which is decent enough for end game. Uh, max race, right? Uh, Chaos race, I try to get to as close to possible to zero, because in D16 maps you're gonna need it. And block chance uh, helps, helps us a little bit, right? And we do get some, you know, uh, torch as well here, so. Pretty interesting, good stuff. Anyway, uh, so first of all, the weapon, right? Uh, for, only thing to consider here is just try to find a decent uh, weapon that uh, hits at least 1.9 uh, attacks per second, right? And as you can see, it costs around 4.2 to 6x souls. I guess average is like 6x souls for this thing. If you can't afford it, uh, totally fine was Ikimonji, like. 1c weapon right <laughs> then just uh, try to get uh, channel skins have minus mana cost uh, pretty much uh, we want uh, cyclone to be zero cost so we can always spin around right and then only thing that we use to uh, actually cost uh, that cost mana is going to be channel scry which is uh, 19 mana it's pretty much nothing right uh, so yeah uh, lucidity i mean you can definitely put something else Crit multi or critical strike chance uh, anointment here, uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, channel is clear uh, minus mana cost and avoid being stunned while channeling, which is pretty nice. And I, uh, I think I have, yeah, avoid be avoid being stunned here as well. And also, I think I have somewhere else uh, some cluster jewel or something. Uh, so pretty much a stun immune when we are channeling, which is really nice, right? And everything else, you know, just try to get flat fees and crit multi. So, we, because we are gonna be crit build with uh, like 20%, um, <laughs> so 20% crit chance or something like that. But where crit multi is so high and we are attack attacking so fast, uh, it's still gonna do like insane damage. And as you could see from the metamorph damage and the boss damage, I mean, the damage is just absolutely insane. And I'm not using an insane weapon, this is just an average weapon, right? Uh, but anyway. Uh, gloves, I uh, try to find accuracy as well, so I do have some accuracy here, I have some accuracy on my curse uh, ring here, uh, big accuracy here, right, and that's pretty much all you need to cap around 100% and uh, 99 for the evasive monsters, right. Uh, I am using orange anguish, you can change it out to something like, you know, uh, Rislata's coil, which is something I want to get, but it's too, like, stupid expensive, like 10 next souls or something. So it couldn't, I didn't want to use it. So what I'm doing here, but if you do get Rislata Coil, then you can be a little bit more defensive, right? Which could help out. But right, right now I'm uh, changing my endurance charges to be brutal charges. So we're going to be doing triple damage as, you know, like 9%. We have 9% uh, chance to do triple damage at the moment. If we invest more into uh, endurance charges we have more chance so that also might work out if you want to check it out I, I might check it out that might uh, try out how is like six to nine endurance charges you know how much of, uh, of a difference it is uh, but at the moment this is what I'm uh, using and now for our boots uh, main thing is level 20 45 that's what you want to get and 
uh, you want to have cyclone all the time cyclone cannot be anywhere else cyclone has to be in the boots uh, to you know use uh, fortify so we can have fortify up pretty much 24 7 uh, which is really nice and we do have some fortify nodes as well so we're gonna be uh, getting a little bit more effect out of our fortify which is nice uh, I do have some chaos rays here, which is nice. Not a lot of movement speed, not a lot of movement speed. But as you can see, with our Berserk Cup, we are super fast still. So didn't really need expensive boots, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, of course, enemies with vulnerability on hit, pretty much what you need. And this is just the, the cheapest thing that you can find, right? Uh, here, yeah, crit, multi, physical damage. Uh, here, uh, a lot of int, because uh, we do uh, need int for our helmet. Because these helmets tend to get a uh, very expensive, or not too expensive. I could change it out and ditch the int and get a better helmet, right? Uh, get an armor base helmet. Uh, but this was like 60C or something like that. They're still like 70C or something. So pretty cheap. So that's why I went with this and crafted int on it to, you know, use it actually, right? And uh, of course, our uh, shield red blade banner, right? Uh, which. Uh, uh, gives us the workers have infinite power so uh, that's pretty much the build enabling uh, thing here right so uh, we can actually use general scry at maximum power this, you can't have anything else here than red blade banner of course you can buy different red blade banners right uh, uncorrupted and then corrupts uh, something better than 30 max life but still 30 max life is not too bad right uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, something else, yeah. If we do wish, if we go into ultimatums, if I rem I never, uh, I never remember to do this, but uh, we can switch quickly uh, to our Sinvactus medal, and then with just with Cyclone, we can enable our uh, rampage. We can and then switch back, and we have rampage, which is for ultimatums pretty insane. So that's a small little trick if you wish to add uh, riot and use that uh, for flask, right? Uh, get a bleed uh, immunity flask, um, some torch chance, right? Phasing, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, uh, better crits, right? Uh, more melee damage, and maybe ditch out uh, this or ditch out this for um, the sulfur flask um, bottle fate, right? For bottle fate, uh, either way, but it's 10x also. I didn't do that. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much my gear here, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, the passive tree. So we are going to be warbringering. So our exerted tax. This is something that maybe a lot of people don't know. Uh, General Scry counts as exerted. So our blade, fl uh, blade flurry is going to be exerted. Uh, of course, yeah, I didn't show you my links as well, but yeah, this is what you need here. Uh, aspect of carnage, more damage, and flawless savagery with blitz. To get more attacks per second right because you know blade flurry got or generous Clive blade flurry got nerfed so the channel uh, blade flurry only uh, does damage 0 0.6 seconds so they have 0 0.6 seconds to get to the maximum stages and do the maximum damage right uh, so this is how we get uh, easily over 10 attacks per second so they can easily do that right uh, especially for single target uh, but yeah, that's uh, why I went here. I did try this out as well, but yeah, the life loss was pretty hard and we are not a tanky build, so yeah, I went still with this one here. Anyway, yeah, the links, right? Uh, so we are using Leap Slam, Berserk, Second Wind, uh, so Berserk is a little bit uh, faster to... has a little bit faster cooldown rate, right? Leap Slam works perfectly. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, I don't think Dash is the right call here. Leap Slam is so good here because uh, we have so much attacks per second as well even with a uh, one single uh, hand weapon here right and here blood and sand pride dread banner blood rage right uh, blood rage we pretty much have on all the time to get a little bit more attack speed right and uh, some other benefits and uh, blood of sand more damage right pride more damage as well uh, and dread banner uh, do get, give us um, uh, impel chance so we do have 100% uh, impel chance which is which is really uh, good and this is pretty much what we are using so if we want to add a watcher side jewel here the best in slot the only watcher side that you would want to get into this build is the plus two impales while being affected by pride i think it was but it's like 
crazy expensive again like i think it was 10 to 30 exalts or something so it's something you don't really have to think about it as you could see our damage is totally fine but if you want to upgrade the build yeah that's what you want to get so cast while channeling with cyclone with infused channeling and desecrate so we're gonna be making the corp corpses right and uh, getting benefits from infusion which grants us more damage and also we're gonna be taking less damage which is pretty nice right uh, and also I'm gonna be using I'm using a cluster tools which, which I'm gonna show you in a second here which further improves in your channeling here so war grace really uh, nice thing to have I have it on my uh, second mouse button here or third or fifth or whatever it is so when I'm in ultimatum and I get a big hit I'll just hit war grace and I'm Good to go again <laughs> so cast when damage taken is with multi shell because we are we, we do have a lot of like decent amount of armor right uh, so that's why I went with Molten Shell here. Uh, we do have the Vol version, but I think uh, I'm gonna ditch even the Vol version. We, sh we should just get the... Hey, no, there's no difference, because we don't use max max level uh, Molten Shell, so yeah. Anyway, just the Molten Shell here, uh, which, you know, auto gas when we take a big hit here. Because uh, we don't have room to use the Vol uh, one. We do have, but I don't... There's too many buttons for me. Uh, that's why I'm not using it. Uh, so, and yeah, Ancestral Worship with multiple totem support and Ancestral Protector. Uh, and also a precision here, that, which gives us uh, more critical strike chance and accuracy. A lot of uh, flat accuracy, which is super important uh, for a crit build rate uh, to cap out our accuracy uh, hit chance. Uh, but yeah, Ancest Ancestral Protector was uh, one that I used, uh, you know, most of the time leveling. And then I figured out, hey, why why not use a multiple totem support with Ancestral Wardship so we get the damage buff as well, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much what I do now. And it works out perfectly because I only ever use it on big single targets and I hit the, put them down and I do crazy amount of damage and I have a crazy amount of attack speed as well, right? Uh, which is pretty nice. So, the six link. Faster attacks with Blade Flurry, Generous Cry, melee physical damage, Impale support and Brutality. So we are doing Impales, right? So Impale support is uh, pretty much what you're gonna need to have here. Brutality, so you, you know, with melee physical, the oh, skill gems that we, you would use with any uh, physical skill pretty much, right? And Blade Flurry, and uh, Blade Flurry with faster attacks also helps us get to that 10 uh, plus attacks per second. Uh, on average much much easier and as you could see damage wise we're still doing like insane damage so faster attacks is really a uh, good a good choice here so that's about the skill gems right what about the passive three right uh, we do go here get some life notes two of them <laughs> uh, we could now because i am 92 next levels i could take uh, these life notes here or maybe Try something here with cluster shoes I don't know uh, you can do whatever you want pretty much uh, but yeah we do take the impale notes here and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory I guess uh, we do take the war cry notes so our war cries are faster and uh, this one is uh, interesting war cry cooldown recovery rate 12% I see a lot of people taking this I haven't take, taken it but it might be worth it now because that means that we can uh, war cry Quick, uh, more quickly and as we have so many attacks per second it might be worth it to even take it so it might be worth it damage wise like a lot even maybe I don't know uh, you can try it out maybe I'll try it out but I haven't taken it so yeah <laughs> uh, yeah we take the fortify effect nose so if we do have fortify we do have a lot more damage and attack speed which is really nice and uh, fortify effect as well which is nice and crit critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier nodes wherever we possibly can get them for decent price rate uh, so that's pretty much it for those things so um yeah the next things uh, are the regular jewels right pretty much what you want is one with corrupted blood uh, cannot be inflicted on you because in end game in p16 maps and uh, in red maps general you get hit with corrupted blood so often and it's so uh, rippy so just try to get uh, one with uh, something decent, right? Uh, I got one with uh, fire and cold resistance here and some critical strike multiplier with 100 me melee weapons. And I think it was just like 10 C or something like that. Super, super, uh, you know, cheap, 10 or 20 C. You can get it, uh, the end game slot would be to get one with uh, life percentage as well, right? Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much 
uh, how I kept my resistances as well, right? Because we do use uh, quite a few uniques uh, and we do need accuracy and uh, stats and stuff like that. So it's kind of tricky to get the resistances, but this is how I did it. Uh, get got some resistances on jewels. Uh, so here, critical strike multiplier, uh, 70% max life again, right? Here I got, um, I found this myself, but it's only 5% and I can't, you know, divine it to 7. Uh, but yeah, crit multi, crit multi and max life, this is pretty much what you would want in the end game strat without resistances, right? Crit multi, crit multi and max life, uh, but as I am pretty hard on the resistances, yeah, then I chose to just teach one crit multi stat uh, for a little bit resistances, right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's uh, what I'm using here. I, I need to divine some of these to get more life, which is, yeah, totally doable, right? Uh, so large tool, which I'm using here, uh, you can actually use only just two passives. I don't even take this one here. I don't think it's worth it. You can get it. Battle hardened with uh, iron breaker, nothing too special. Uh, but the medium ones are getting uh, a little bit more uh, interesting, which you can play around uh, with. I chose to get uh, led by example with Haunting Shout. Uh, so led by example is when you Warcry, you and nearby allies gain Onslaught for 4 seconds. This is pretty much Burma Onslaught. And this is why I went with the rest of Defiance. Because we do get increased Onslaught effect. You gain Onslaught for 5 seconds per Endurance Charge when hit. Uh, you lose all Endurance Charges when hit. You gain Endurance Charge on kill, which goes uh, nicely good together with Ars Anguish. So, I think the rest of Defiance is pretty interesting stuff, uh, thing to play with. And also it's not divine, so I'm missing a lot of life here, of course, right? But at least my Onslaught effect is pretty high up there, but still not 100, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, this is why I chose this. And Haunted Shout, enemies taunted are intimidated, so 10% more damage, which is really nice. So here, as you can see, uh, Provocateur and Rattling Below. So exerted attacks have 8% chance to deal double damage. Because we are our, as I told you before, General Scry is exerted attacks with Plate Flurry. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are getting 8% double da uh, damage chance. I might uh, try out uh, a jewel, so another jewel with this. So we, uh, maybe 16% chance is even better, but I don't feel the need of uh, damage rate. And Provocateur, crit, uh, Critical Strike Chance and Critical Strike Multiplier. Pretty good, right? And the second uh, me uh, medium cluster tool that I tool uh, that I thought to get was this one here, and uh, thought to went uh, thought to go a little bit defensive uh, and check out rapid infusion. So 50% increased effect of infusion. I think it works out pretty well. It gives us damage and survivability a little bit, and also precise focus, so a little bit damage uh, as well here, which is pretty nice. And um, yeah, this is pretty much how the build comes together here at the moment for me. Uh, th th one thing uh, to note here is um, there's uh, stuff like this, like crushed enemy, uh, crushed enemies for four seconds when you hit uh, hit them while they are on full life rate. The thing is, like um, with General Scry and Blade Flurry, we we do hit them with you know with our uh, cyclone, right? But if uh, if we cyclone here, uh, our general strikes are you know, pretty long range, range, right? If we don't hit them with our uh, cyclone, then all the effects that count as you dealing damage don't, you know, work with uh, Blade Fury. They don't give any benefit for it. Because Blade Fury's uh, Mirage Warriors, they're like minions, but not, right? <laughs> so it's not us dealing the damage, uh, which, is, which is pretty interesting uh, stuff. But anyway, yeah, this is pretty much how the build comes together here. I hope I didn't lift out too much stuff for something too important. Uh, I haven't done a build guide video in a long time again, uh, for a couple of leagues, I think, even. Uh, but yeah, I thought this was a really decent build to do a small little quick li little guide on how it works in 314. I, I found this build in 3.13, but at the end of 3.13, and in 3.13 I did a Golemancer, which was really insane, did all my 36 challenges, cut my hideout, right, that I don't use, uh, but uh, yeah, it was re a really nice build, and then at the end of that build I was thinking, I, I really want a real boss cell that could also do damage and was gonna survive these 16 maps, and I found this, 
and it instantly got nerfed, right? and I managed to try it out uh, like a couple of days or something like that, like, nothing too special. And I saw the potential there, and then I saw the big nerf rate right, uh, from one second uh, channeling to 0.6 or 40% nerf. I thought it's, it's gonna be still fine, right? <laughs> you just get more attack speed, and the damage was off the uh, off the charts anyway, right? So anyway, this is how it works, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna still be improving this build, but I'm gonna check out the uh, Divine Iron build uh, now, I think, for some time, and then gonna come back to this one when I feel bored of that, so I'm gonna switch between those builds, but yeah, this is such a great build. I'm just gonna level up my Divine Iron build, and uh, if I find some extra exalts, I'm gonna buy, buy a better weapon for this one here and see how it uh, works then. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you soon, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, maybe subscribe. Maybe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.